Hope you're having a good day. <laughs> what? So I made my first YouTube video when I was 14 years old in the year 2007. It was a video of me uh, dancing to High School Musical. Eventually I made, uh, I don't know, a dozen or so videos. I wanted more people to see them. If a, uh, a video is created in a forest <laughs> and, and no one hears it or sees it, does it exist? <laughs> People ask me if I have like a, a secret fact, a little trick, a little life hack uh, to grow on YouTube, and I do. It's, you know, it's deceptively simple. Uh, you have to make videos that people click on and watch for a long time. When I'm deciding what topics to talk about, there's this tug of war between like what I know the audience wants and uh, what interests me. There's a lot of traditional advice that says that you should niche down and be very specific to the audience that you're talking to, but I would rather grow more slowly in a way that allows me to experiment than, than grow really quickly and have an audience that isn't willing to shift when I want to shift. Over time, I can build an engaged audience that doesn't care what the topic is, they're just coming for my take on it. So build for the audience you want, not the audience you have. So immediately after I post a video, I am sweating bullets. <laughs> um, so once I've double checked that everything is good, I open up my analytics dashboard. I have an idea of what my real-time metrics normally look like, and so I can tell if things are going well or not. Uh, and it'll also tell you the average view duration of how long people are watching your video for. So if I see that my average view duration for a video is lower than normal, I will look into the structure of that video and try to understand where the engagement fell off. One of the most important things that leads to a watch of a video is how that video is presented. I spend a lot of time on uh, thumbnails and titles. Uh, I think everyone should because it has such a big impact on the performance of the video that it should it should get a lot of your investment. If what you're promising in the thumbnail is not delivered in the video, your retention is gonna suffer because people are going to not stick around because they know they're not gonna get what they were looking for. So every now and then a video is bound to underperform. In these cases, I may change around the thumbnail and title of a video that's underperforming to make it more similar to a video that did really well or a vi video that did well that's similar. In the first few hours of posting a video, if it's underperforming, then I will start changing the title and thumbnail immediately. Even though I don't have all of the metrics to, to, to back up that decision quite yet, I'm just like using the real-time growth of the video to inform that. No one is really sure all the nuances of how these platforms work, so I think the best thing you can do is continue experimenting yourself and see what works for you, and uh, you may be surprised with the results. If you keep making the metrics go up, that's great as long as you're doing something that you want to be doing. And then you're, you're good, you're a YouTuber now, congrats.